I can see that's going to be a consideration in prepping for my videos from now on. Cat hair mitigation. Of course, I only record these things in 720, so you guys probably aren't going to see it anyway. But still, you know, it's the idea that's there. Lint Roller. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, it's the end of another month already. I can't believe it. It feels like February just ended, and now we're at the end of March. And uh, once again on my channel, the end of the month means my monthly playlist video. It was gone for a while, but now it's back, as you know from last month. Yes, playlist is the monthly video in which I just talk about the music that I've listened to over the past month, just for fun, not for any other reason related to my channel. Yes, leisure listening, listening just for listening's sake, is something that a lot of us music YouTubers particularly uh, just don't seem to make a lot of time for. And uh, especially uh, as it was last year, I was swamped. I almost hit burnout level uh, with doing my uh, backtracks video every month. So yes, now that that's gone out of the way, I've got more time for leisure listening, which I am absolutely loving. I think it was a right decision to at least put backtracks on hiatus. It may be back next year in a modified form, but anyway... Uh, so yes, I, I like to give in my playlist videos, at least what I'm trying to do every month, is to give a little bit of love to each of the three major active physical music formats that are going on right now. LP, CD, and cassette. And yes, I will be do talking about my five favorite listens of the past month. The, the highlights, not my entire playlist. That would take a long time. Uh, from each five from each of the three formats uh, that I've listened to, I've st I'm still going through and having a lot of fun going through the big... 250 plus cassette haul that uh, I got from a family friend. It's been a whole lot of fun going through that, and as you will see here in this video. Uh, but before I get to my playlist proper, I like to talk about uh, whatever might be on my mind in terms of music or in terms of my channel. Uh, I don't really have anything in those two respects uh, this month, but a little something in my personal life. Uh, as I kind of hinted at with my cold open, uh, after seven years without a pet in the house, we have become cat parents again. Yes, we saw this pair of brothers, bonded brothers, as they, as they say, as they call them, uh, they need to be adop adopted together, 10-year-old uh, brother cats. Uh, we saw them on the Pet of the Week segment on the news uh, three weeks ago, three weeks ago tomorrow. Uh, so yes, we've had them in the house for two weeks and two days. Uh, and yes, we decided to go ahead and adopt them. Uh, they are uh, older cats, 10 years old, so that means that they're... Uh, rambunctiousness is behind them and that's what we were looking for was more mellow cats more easygoing relaxed cats that uh, that like to give and receive a lot of love and these two do as well as indoor only cats and that was another item on our checklist so yes they kind of ticked all the boxes i guess you'd say and we brought them home and they have just made our house so much warmer and more loving since then and but yes their names are frank and zot and they are just the cutest little brothers. They're kind of like Mutt and Jeff, though. Frank is a bit of a chunky guy, and uh, Zot is very skinny. And uh, Zot has some uh, uh, neurological issues that uh, we need to keep an eye on. Uh, they think it's just a, a thing that he's had from birth, but uh, he's otherwise he is a happy and healthy cat. They both are, honestly, and it's been so much fun. I don't know why we waited so long. We had been getting the itch for about a year now to uh, bring another cat or two into the house. And finally, when we saw those two, when we saw Frank and Zot, we decided that was it. That This was our chance, and yes, they are just the cutest darn things in the world. So uh, yes, that is really the only personal or even music update that I have for right now. So let's go ahead and get on into the playlist proper, uh, starting with the cassettes. I like to switch up the order of the formats I highlight uh, from video to video. I'm going to try to do that anyway. But yes, with cassettes, I've got the five titles to talk about today. First one is probably the best, and it is the two-volume set of Sam Cooke's Greatest Hits. Uh, this is so cool. I mean, I've got a uh, CD compilation of Sam Cooke's stuff, but uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and keep this one and the CD as well, because this set actually has some stuff that is not on the CD. This are, there are a couple of uh, gospel uh, renditions. He dabbled in gospel music throughout some of his career. One of the best voices to come out of the 60s, one of my all-time favorites, and just, yeah, fantastic. All the big hits are on that set, of course. Cupid and uh, What a Wonderful World are probably my two favorite Sam Cooke songs, but yeah. Wonderful, wonderful artist. I can't say enough about him. And then the next one is a compilation, uh, original rock and roll. 
I was not really going to keep any of the compilations that I saw out of that set, but this one was kind of kind of nice. It has uh, the Carl Perkins version of Blue Suede Shoes. I always kind of like that one. One of one of the two versions of Ooby Dooby by Roy, Roy Orbison. I know that there are two versions out there because uh, this is one is different from the one that appeared in, of all things, Star Trek First Contact, the movie. And I've always wondered what the story is between those two versions. I, I need to look it up. It may be online for all I know. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious to find out what the two versions, the two stories between the two versions of Ooby Dooby are. And then uh, the leader of the pack by the Shangri Laws, and Sea Cruise by Frankie Ford. And also The Boy from New York City by The Ad Libs. Uh, the only version of that that I was familiar with is the Manhattan Transfer version. So, yes, a nice little compilation here. Uh, you know, compilations are normally, eh, whatever. But this one was kind of cool. So, yeah, good stuff. Then we have Ronnie Millsap. Now, this one was a real surprise. Uh, he was not nearly as country as I expected him to sound. You know, the, the 70s and 80s country, for some reason, I just expected it all to be the really twangy, honky-tonky stuff you know not not so much the the more uh mainstream pop country that you kind of have uh that's in more abundance nowadays you know between uh, uh keith urban and uh, brad paisley and those guys uh, but uh, yeah this one was kind of on the pop country crossover side and i think i believe that ronnie Millsap was one of the first uh modern era artists uh, country artists to have some pop crossover success you know, obviously there was, you know, Patsy Cline and Johnny Cash were the big names from uh, classic country era. But uh, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong out there, anybody. But yes, I believe Ronnie Millsap was uh, kind of made history in that he was a, a bit of a prop, pop crossover uh, success. So it's kind of cool. I'm looking forward to listening to more of Ronnie Millsap. And then we have a pop artist from the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, Bobby, Bobby Vinton. And... One of the interesting things about this set is it's interesting to hear the uh, the artifacts, I guess you'd say, of sexism and misogyny that uh, seemed harmless back at the time, but have cropped up, I guess I should say, in listening to classic songs like, like these. Stand By Your Man, which I'm kind of surprised that... Uh, well, it was, I can't remember who it was that did Stand By Your Man. Was it Tammy Wynette? It was kind of uh, reinforcing a woman's stereotypical role of being a housewife and that kind of thing, being being an obedient wife. So uh, it kind of takes on a bit more of a shady connotation when a man is singing that song. So uh, there's that. And also, um, It's a Sin to Tell a Lie. That one was another interesting one in that, uh, you know, it's about the concept of the song is, you know, it's wrong to say I love you when you don't mean it. And one of the verses in here was um, the reason he didn't mean it was because she was not pretty. It's, it's, it's a song that nobody would be able to get away with right now, unless it was totally in satire. So yeah, it's just, it's just interesting to me to hear those kinds of, as I said, those uh, sexism and misogyny artifacts in songs. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, if I didn't uh, live in the environment that I do and, and uh, work in the environment that I do, I might not have become sensitive to this kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, interesting. And then uh, the last cassette item here we have is John Tesh. Yes, New Age artist, uh, kind of the butt of a lot of jokes. But uh, this is kind of kind of cool. I mean, one of my, as I've mentioned before, one of my first loves in music was New Age and instrumental um, smooth jazz, contemporary jazz. I had had one or two John Tesh albums, and they were probably on cassette, actually, way back in the beginning. Got rid of them a long time ago, uh, just because I, I enjoyed other artists of that genre more than John Tesh. But uh, this, this is a pretty good one. Yeah, and I can't remember, I, I, I wasn't paying attention to which tracks were playing when, but there was one that was kind of a really cool, anthemic, uplifting kind of song, and I think it may have been the title track, Avalon, but I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, and some, some good stuff here. Yeah. Good stuff on the, the, the New Age front by uh, Mr. John Tesh. And now let's move on to the vinyl records that I listened to over the past month, the highlights of the vinyl records that I listened to over the past month. Uh, first one here is a little bit unusual. I found this one in the uh, New Arrivals used section at House of Records and never heard of them before and decided to pick them up and give them a try. It's an, a band called 3D, and I think they're an American band, I'm not sure, and this is from 1980... Oh, 1980. And these guys sound a whole lot like uh, Elvis Costello and the Attractions. In fact, uh, even, even the lead vocalist... Uh, it sounds like he's almost trying to imitate Elvis Costello's voice. So yeah, and I have to wonder if that might be why they didn't take off, was because they were kind of trying to be Elvis Costello copycats. Uh, but I could be wrong, who knows. But anyway, uh, good stuff on here. So And, you know, very catchy songs, very much like that. 
power pop with a dash of new wave that you know Elvis Costello and, and those guys did in the late 70s and early 80s. I would not be surprised if this was in the bargain bin of uh, most record uh, stores because yeah they just they just didn't seem to catch on and in fact I think this might have actually been their only album. I, I looked on Wikipedia and probably forgot but uh, still though not bad. Uh, not bad at all. And then uh, the, the other four in this stack are pretty much well-known artists I believe. Uh, this one maybe not so much at least uh, not a top tier super prominent artist from the 80s but uh, still one that made uh, made some significant waves Sheila E and she is a vocalist and percussionist she was a bit of a, a protege of sorts of Prince uh, Prince kind of took her under his wing and uh, gave her her first record deal and also uh, wrote or co-wrote a few of the songs on here in fact the two singles the bell of Saint Mark and the title track, The Glamorous Life, uh, were written by Prince. And that was the, the title track is actually the biggest, I believe, the biggest single she had, The Glam Glamorous Life. Great song. It's almost got that Gloria Estefan's more upbeat songs. That's what The Glamorous Life really reminds me of. And yeah, so, and, and she was kind of covered the same sort of territory as Gloria Estefan, except there's a little bit less Latin influence, but still uh, heavy on the percussion since Sheila is herself a percussionist. But yes, some great stuff. I am actually thinking about uh, The Glamorous Life was really the only song of hers that I knew. So I am actually thinking about um, picking up uh, subsequent albums of hers and checking them out because uh, who knows what else I might have missed. Yeah, some good songs in here. Uh, Oliver's House, which is the first track on side two, was really good. And... Uh, there's a song on here called Shortberry Straw Cake, which is an instrumental, and that was really good too. So, yeah, this is a good album. I, I would recommend checking it out uh, if, if you're curious about, especially if you like the 80s uh, pop and R&B divas, uh, Gloria Estefan, Jody Watley. I'm not a big fan of Jody Watley, but yeah, Jody Watley. Um, Paula Abdul, maybe. But uh, yeah, along the same vein. Yeah. And so yeah, good stuff. And then we have a uh, another New Age thing, kind of like when I, I mentioned uh, John Tesh a few minutes ago. This is quite possibly my favorite New Age album, at least by this artist, and this is Lily on the Beach by Tangerine Dream. I've had this on CD for years and years and years. I first had it on cassette, wore that out, and got the CD. It exists on vinyl. I didn't even know it was on vinyl, but I love it. And this one and their previous one, Optical Race, which I think I also highlighted in a playlist video recently, are very atypical of their normal output. They normally put out very kind of ambient and atmospheric, longer tracks, and their private music uh, releases, this one was on the private music label, as was their previous one, Optical Race, and the one after this, Melrose, uh, much more... Um, radio friendly, even though New Age music didn't get radio play. But yeah, the, the shorter, uh, more pop song styled structures of uh, tunes uh, is, is kind of what populates these albums, their private music albums. But yeah, um, the ti the first track, Too Hot For My Chinchilla, that one's, I, I mean, first of all, you gotta love the title, but that is just a fantastic track. And oh, Desert Drive is amazing. 29 Palms is an absolutely gorgeous solo piano number. I dearly love that one. It is one of my all-time favorite compositions of any genre, anywhere, period. And that one is just, you, you got to hear that. If you like piano ballads, but without words, that's what that is. But yeah, so many great, great songs on here. And that's a, a good reason why it's one of my favorites of all time. Then we have uh, Belinda Carlisle. And this is her sophomore album, Heaven on Earth. Uh, great stuff. I, I actually found this one and her first album at the same time, and I didn't realize I, I didn't realize how many good songs Belinda Carlisle had in her discography. This one's got like three of her great singles: "Heaven Is a Place on Earth" and "Circle in the Sand," as well as "I Get Weak." Three of her best hits. I guess, and uh, she, she was part of the Go Go's, as you might or might not know, one of the great all-girl bands of the '80s, alongside the Bangles. And again, her solo work is just great too. So yeah, I would recommend her as well. I, I guess I should stop saying that because I recommend pretty much everything I listen to, honestly. I'm sounding like a broken record, pun intended. Uh, anyway, the last LP in playlists uh, this month is Memphis by Petula Clark. Uh, I've, if you've watched me long enough, you've heard me rave about my love for Petula Clark uh, before. It's fantastic. I've got like nine of her albums. This one was put out in 1970, I believe. And yes, this one was recorded in Memphis and has that kind of Memphis uh, sound, kind of like kind of like Dusty Springfield in Memphis. Same sort of stuff. And I believe it has a, a combination of covers and original tunes. 
I couldn't tell you which is which uh, because I was not prepared that way. But uh, yeah, there's a reason I love Petula so much, and this album is just as good as all of her others. So yeah, fantastic, wonderful stuff. And now on to the CD portion of my playlist for this month. Uh, starting out with a CD that I actually didn't know existed until I was searching for CDs to buy as part of one of Amazon's, is it buy two get one free sales or buy three get two free or whatever it was that they were doing a few months ago. And so I decided to pick it up and uh, take a chance on it and I actually really enjoyed it. It's called James Horner The Classics and this is basically an album of uh, interpretations of themes from James Horner scores, you know, he's a film score composer, and a lot of um, contemporary classical crossover artists basically do uh, uh, interpretation, interpretations of the themes on here. Uh, two cellos, which is a cellist duo from the Czech Republic, I believe, they do two different selections on here, one from Titanic and one from Braveheart. And uh, Lindsey Sterling does a couple of songs on here, one from Legends of the Fall and another from uh, his score from the movie Troy. Uh, the Piano Guys do a selection from Avatar, so if you're a Piano Guys fan. But yeah, stuff from The Amazing Spider-Man, Willow, Cocoon, Star Trek II, Legends of the Fall, An American Tale, Field of Dreams. I mean, all the, all the classics are on here. So yeah, a very enjoyable album. Uh, I, I personally more prefer the original scores uh, arrangements and stuff but i don't mind uh interpretations uh from uh from now and then but uh, yeah very very good album and then we have a two disc set uh, this actually replaces a one disc greatest hits that i had uh, for a while of the late great bill withers and i mean you know he, he he passed away late last year i believe and i mean when you read the track list you remember what a great and amazing and sometimes underappreciated artist bill withers was ain't no sunshine and lean on me probably his two biggest hits lovely day and uh, just the two of us with grover washington jr and uh, yeah he will be sorely missed and is sorely missed by me so yeah fantastic two disc compilation of bill withers classics then we have, uh, I've been on a bit of a Bon Jovi binge lately. I, uh, ever since I bought his album 2020, I've kind of gone back and gotten some of his earlier albums and some of his more recent albums, and I am pretty much on my way to, probably sooner than I expect, uh, collecting his entire their entire discography. And this is one that I listened to recently, This House Is Not For Sale. Uh, one of the better albums that I've heard that I've gotten so far, uh, I, I think, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, the title track is great, and uh, God Bless This Mess, that's a good one, as well as uh, Born Again Tomorrow. Some great, great, so great songs on here. I tend to enjoy Bon Jovi's more recent stuff rather than their classic stuff, uh, although it, as the more I absorb it, that might change. But uh, yeah, it's, I haven't found a bum Bon Jovi album yet. Let's put it that way. And then this next one, uh, which was also part of the Amazon sale that I got the James Horner CD from, it's one that I had a long time ago and got rid of for whatever reason and decided to pick up again, mainly because it was part of the sale. It is Bringing Back the Funk by Brian Culbertson. And Brian Culbertson is a jazz uh, pianist, a keyboardist. One of his albums was in my sister's collection. And uh, so uh, that's one thing that prompted me to pick this one back up. This is a great album of, as the title implies, funk songs. Uh, about half of them are originals and half of them are covers. Uh, one of the songs is uh, Hollywood Swinging, which I believe is a Cool in the Gang song originally, as well as You Got to Funkifies, which I can't remember who it was that uh, did that one originally, as well as uh, The World Keeps Going Around, which was written by Bill Withers. And I actually didn't know that until I was doing the research for this video. I just happened to listen to Bill Withers' compilation and this one in the same month and that, that connection was there. But yeah, this one features uh, Bootsy Collins, Music Soul Child, Gerald Albright, Ledisi, and a few other uh, great uh, funk and jazz musicians uh, uh, guesting here on here. And it's executive produced by Maurice White of Earth, Wind & Fire. So it's, it's, it's kind of got, it has its funk credentials right there in the credits. So yes, a great, great album. And it's actually making me uh, think about picking up more of Brian Culbertson's albums in the future. So yeah, good stuff. And now we come to the last album in my playlist for this month, and I've saved this one to the end for a specific reason, because it circles back around to the beginning of my video where I was talking about the two cats we adopted this month. Well, uh, it was on a Friday that we went to the shelter to see if they were still there. We weren't sure if they were still there or not to adopt them. And uh, that was the day that, of that week that I worked in the office at work in, in town. And uh, on my lunch break that day, I went to a store 
a little store called Epic Seconds downtown Eugene. They sell CDs and DVDs and uh, video games. And I was looking through the $1 CD section and um, backing up a little bit, um, I was going to petition my family if we adopted Frank and Zot that we were going to change Zot's name. I wanted to change his name. Just I just I just didn't like the name Zot for whatever reason. Uh, but anyway, I was looking through the dollar CDs there and I found one that caught my eye. This is by a uh, 60s uh, R&B pop revival act that I had never heard of before. This album was put out in 1990 and it is a group called The Strawberry Zots. What are the odds? Seriously, I'm being totally truthful and honest here. I found a CD on the day that we were going to adopt, hopefully adopt, Frank and Zot. So this, as you can tell, this was a sign right here that that was the last that I ever had about changing Zot's name. And, and as it turns out, obviously, Frank and Zot were still there for us to adopt. So it, it was fate. It was something up there was controlling things and something up there left this seat, guided me to Epic Seconds and had the CD sitting there for me to find. And on top of all that, the music's pretty darn good, too. The 60s groups, American groups that were kind of a response to the British invasion, um, the Young Rascals, Love and Spoonful, that kind of thing, the, the ones with the organ in them, that's what these guys do and or, or did. And it's great stuff. Uh, they do a few covers on here. Uh, Get Me to the World on Time, which I don't remember who did that one originally. And I Can't Control Myself. I also don't remember who did that one. And they also do a cover of Little Latin Loopy Lou. Uh, but all, all the other songs, all of the other 14 songs on here are originals. And they do a pretty darn bang up job on here. I don't know why they didn't go on to more success than they did. I mean, this was their only major label album this was put out on B bmg and they, they kind of just disappeared and it, it's a shame considering how good and how much fun this album was so yeah this was definitely the highlight and a, a cosmic uh, coincidence i i guess you'd say uh, that uh, i ended up picking this one up and so yeah i am going to keep this one in my collection till the day i die i think and just because it has that connection to our our new cat zot and and his brother frank so yeah fantastic album and a great cap off to my playlist for the month of March 2021. And so that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.